hey guys so welcome back uh, uh, in the previous video i was talking about uh, uh, the time domain equations of ofdm with cyclic prefix mm. we saw that uh, how to write uh, these equations uh, uh, in case of wireless channel uh, where the channel is frequency selective uh, uh, right so under frequency selective channel uh, uh, how to express these equations uh, that we had seen for uh, um, ltap channel and uh, and uh, and with cyclic prefix if we represent the equations then we also see that uh, you know the equations are equivalent to the circular uh, circular convolution of uh, channel h and uh, x right so to that uh, if we take the dft uh, we were also seeing that uh, uh, we will get uh, the n parallel flat fading flat fading uh, equations in the frequency domain but we will in this video we will look uh, look into the matrix form of it uh, in the matrix form it will make more sense uh, uh, to see the uh, picture like uh, how it is becoming uh, um, you know circular and uh, how that is helping uh, to eliminate the isi okay and how finally we are going to get uh, n parallel flat fading uh, um, equations in the frequency domain so let me uh, go to the uh, nodes okay uh, this is my nodes <clears throat> so cyclic prefix uh, OFDM system uh, is considered uh, so basically um, I am considering the frequency selective channel right so basically wireless channel itself is frequency selective channel when we uh, go for higher bandwidth uh, because there is a huge ISI so let me consider a held tap channel basically I would be having L, L path. So uh, L path, let, let us consider H of 0 till uh, H of L minus 1. So on H of 0, okay, when I say uh, the received uh, sample is Y of 0, on H of 0, I should be getting X of 0. And on the second path, I should get the previous sample. Okay. So previous sample is X of N minus 1. This is uh, considering the cyclic prefix, right? So we are restricting the ISI to the same block. Uh, that's why it is X of N minus one. So on H of two, I will get X of N minus two and it goes on. And this is noise. So Y of one, I should get uh, in the first path. First path is H of zero, right? I should get X of one. Okay. Then in the second path, which is H of one, I should get the previous two X of one, which is X of zero. In the third path, previous two, x of 0 I should get x of n minus 1 I hope uh, uh, these equations are clear to you um, even I had discussed this in the previous uh, video as well so this equation if I write it in matrix form I would get something like this okay so now um, you can take a pause and you can try to write it in the matrix form uh, you will get uh, uh, you will get this matrix um, so if you see each row okay h of 0 h of 1 h of 2 each row if you see uh, you will observe that um, you know each row is circularly shifted uh, by 1 when compared to the previous row basically this matrix h is a circulant matrix okay now this circulant matrix has got some very good important property so that property has been derived here but i will not go through that uh, so i will try to con concentrate on what is required so let's say this is um, you know in the frequency domain i have x of 0 x of 1 x of n minus 1 samples this is in the frequency domain right so which means that if I apply DFT matrix uh, uh, to this time domain samples, I would get frequency domain samples like this. So one more thing to note down here is this DFT matrix, let's say I represent it as F formation, then IDFT matrix would become something like this. So property of DFT IDFT matrix is that this equation works good. Okay, it's the identity N cross N. Now, what is the property, very important property? So this circulant matrix can be, okay, here it is, circulant matrix can be diagonalized by the DFT and IDFT matrices. What does that mean? So I have this 
channel edge okay so if i write if i take this dft matrix and idft matrix uh, in this form then you will see that you will get this matrix which is a diagonal matrix so basically what we can say is this channel uh, matrix h which is a succulent matrix is diagonalized okay this is a very important property so with this we will see some more uh, um, explanations let's say i apply this this particular property uh, to our equation number one okay the the, uh, the matrix form which we had seen so then the h matrix uh, can be expressed in this form right in this form now we even know that uh, uh, we have this uh, property also right uh, that f formation f by n is equal to identity so this is also giving the clue to us that uh, you know while transmitting while transmitting you need to transmit the dft version of this so that sorry idft version of this so that uh, you know uh, f formation is dft this one okay this i have taken here if i would have if i transmit this x0 all these things as idft okay f by n times this x bar let's say then you know this sorry this idft of actually capital x right capital x bar this is this is in the frequency domain whereas this this one is in the time domain so what do you get this becomes identity anyway so this x bar right i would i would get back my um, frequency domain samples which i had transmitted right this is like giving an indication uh, to to the, to the transmitter that i mean uh, our analysis this is it, this this will actually give the uh, a clue that if I transmit the IDFT of uh, this uh, X bar, then at the receiver, uh, since the channel is circulant, I would get back my uh, X bar without having any uh, inter interface. So just uh, that is what is uh, expressed uh, over here. So let us try to see in these equations. Okay, let, let me go to the other part of it. First, uh, let's say I have uh, y of 0, y of 1 up to y of n minus 1. This is in what? This is in time domain. So these, um, this is a, a channel matrix. This is a circulant matrix, right? With cyclic prefix, uh, we have got this uh, um, matrix. And this is uh, in the time domain. Okay. Then this is noise in the time domain. I have, got, I have considered hell channel taps. So considering the property of uh, circulant matrix what what can i write i can write uh, this uh, uh, hc as this one this matrix right so i will just uh, uh, you know substitute uh, in the equation y bar is equal to uh, f by n hd fh basically i should be having only the diagonal uh, matrix uh, then we can eliminate the isi or we can see the equations as uh, flat fading uh, um, equations so since here uh, we already have a formation okay which is a dft then while transmitting this one okay then uh, you you transmit it as idft idft of uh, x bar to get x bar okay then then what what would i get so then okay where f formation x bar is this one okay so then then i would get this x bar am i right this is in the frequency domain now so hd um, f formation into f by n has become identity so i have got x bar at the receiver we take dft right we take dft which is we are going to multiply with uh, f dft matrix uh, so okay dft matrix is f formation right so if i multiply by f formation okay to this equation f formation has come now f formation into f by n so here f by n was there so prior to that i am multiplying f formation so this also becomes identity 
and then this is uh, this is anyway in the frequency domain so now um, i i got back this equation this is actually uh, you know it is in the vector form let's say if i write the, it the, uh, if i write it like this uh, then um, then all these n samples you see that uh, they are clearly separated out and we are seeing it as uh, n parallel flat fading channel equations okay so all the across all the sub carriers um, the there is no isi y of 0 is equal to h of 0 into x of 0 if you see y of 0 depends only on x of 0 and there is no isi okay so all of across all the sub carriers uh, uh, this is how it, it will be separated and 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 uh, this will be easy for our for our processing okay i hope you got the clarity uh, how to express uh, the wave team equations in the matrix form uh, once you express uh, um, you also got the clarity uh, why we can see that uh, you know the channel matrix is a circulant matrix once we have the channel uh, matrix which is circulant uh, we have the property of channel matrix with that uh, uh, we also got the clarity why we are performing uh, uh, you know high dft and dft uh, at uh, the transmitter and the receiver okay after performing all these things we also saw how these uh, time domain frequency selective uh, uh, channel equations are converting into the flat fading uh, channel equations in the frequency domain okay i hope all these concepts are clear now in the next video what i will do is see cycling prefix we had two design right one is to actually place the last 10 samples in the beginning that is what we have seen till now and we saw that uh, the receiver uh, is becoming much simpler and the channel is holding certain kind of properties and things like that let us see what if we are going to perform zero padding uh, will that be a good uh, approach or not we will see in the next video thank you very much have a great day bye bye please just do subscribe to the channel